Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am the C-H-A-L-L. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever, wherever you are watching this. Today, Chal Chats Morecambe. What is going on at that football club? The released and retained list is yet to be released. We know that the manager is now set to depart and become the number two at Accrington Stanley. We know that the players and staff were paid late by the owners. What is going on at Morecambe Football Club? Before we get started, make sure you do like, comment, subscribe. Click the case bell so you never miss another YouTube video. We're on the road to 3,000 subscribers and half a million views. Let's get there as soon as possible. But the subscribers and the likes, they pale in comparison to someone's football club. So let's get straight into this conversation. Morecambe Football Club is in a mess. If the owner wants to come out publicly and declare, declare this is wrong, they're more than welcome to do so. But I think the rest of football know that the club is in a mess. The manager's gone. Most of the players are going to leave, well, the senior ones anyway, that were on strike on the final day. You know, they had a points deduction towards the end of the season. Players and staff paid late by the owners. It's it's a disgrace. It really is a disgrace. And there's one man at the head of the anger of the supporters, and that is Jason Whittingham, who is the owner of the football club. And... Again, questions have to be asked. No disrespect on a personal level. And look, you know, no matter what the anger of the Morecambe fans and things like that, everything I say towards their owner is not on a personal level. This is purely on a football business level. How did he pass the fit and proper persons test? I think we have an idea. It's simple, really. The, 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 the annual, the salary checks don't happen until the start of every season. That's part of the reason, in my opinion, why he was allowed to pass through the fit and proper persons test. I've said this numerous times on videos, the fit and proper persons test needs to be rewritten. There needs to be a pre-qualification test. There needs to be a mandatory, mandatory, and I'm talking mandatory because it needs to happen, a forced mandatory budget set aside by the Premier League, and they must be forced to give some of the billions they earn to clubs lower down in their region. So there should be, in my opinion, a stability fund, mandatory set up by the Football League, where the Premier League must legally be forced to give some of their billions of pounds to lower league clubs that are struggling. And it has to be set, regionalised. So clubs like... Morecambe, your Manchester clubs lower down, teams like your, obviously your Berries, if they were still in the Football League now, um, your Rochdales, you know, if Stockport go through any financial problems in the future or they get taken over by an incompetent owner in the future from the owner that's doing great with them at the moment, if they get taken over again and they go through financial problems, again, there needs to be Manchester clubs set up in that region. The London clubs must be given to the London clubs and the clubs around that area, the clubs nearest to that area as well. So it needs to be set in a legal way so that there is a stability fund, a mandatory stability fund, where the billions owned by the Premier League can be offered down and forcefully offered down to the lower league clubs because clearly the pyramid is not an English football pyramid anymore. It's not an English football pyramid anymore. What it is, is the Premier League and sod the rest. That's exactly what it is. Premier League and sod the rest. And unless I get proven otherwise, please tell me. Please tell me. And what was what what was that, that I saw today about the Prem? They're talking about a 39th fixture in the US. Sorry. Sorry. And you know what? Just to prove to you, if you're listening to this right now thinking, surely not. Surely not. Here's the proof. Here is the proof. And I'm going to get this up for you live on the air right now to prove it. Here we go. So, Premier League in talks with major broadcaster to play 39th game in USA 16 years after the controversial plot first failed. Richard Masterson Co. very open. Are you having a laugh? Are you having a laugh? So the Premier League clubs, the Premier League clubs, moan, whine, 
B-I-T-C-H-ing about, oh, we have to play an extra fixture. Oh, let's just scrap FA Cup replays. Let's scrap lower league income to suit our whiny schedules. And yet you're talking about playing a 39th league game in the US. Make it make sense. Someone, please, for the love of Jesus and any other religion you follow, make it make sense. Because it doesn't make sense to me. How can you want to scrap FA Cup replays because you don't want to play more games and risk injuries, and yet you're talking about a 39th fixture in the league calendar in another country? 38 games in England and an extra game in the US. How? It's Americanized. It's NBA style. That's an NBA decision. The NBA play an international fixture or two, or even three sometimes, on certain seasons. I think they've got one in Paris and they've got one in Mexico, I think, this year, or, or last season. I, I, I struggle to keep count. But now we're talking about the Premier League doing it. I'm sorry, it's... Oh, it grinds my gears, it really does. You're complaining about fixture scheduling, and yet you're talking about a 39th fixture. And you know exactly who's going to pass the book on that one in terms of football clubs. Man City, Man United, Chelsea, Liverpool, Tottenham, and Arsenal. Six clubs who I don't even call clubs. I don't even call them Charlie's Angels. I call them the guilty six, the greedy six, the elite, greedy, forceful six. Because you know they're going to pass the book on it. You know they're going to say yes to that. Aston Villa might say yes to it because, of course, they were against the salary cap. You know, maybe Aston Villa needed the salary cap to improve. But this isn't about them. This isn't about them. This is about a club that's actually struggling. Not moaning about more fixtures. Not, you know, moaning about how much we're getting paid. This is a club that struggled to pay anyone on time. This club has an owner that didn't pay its staff on time, its players on time. Some of the senior players reportedly went on strike for the final game of the season. So Morecambe took a 3-3 draw against Swindon on the final day of League 2 and they were fielding players that had not played barely any game time this season and a couple of youth graduates. That's a club that's struggling. That's a club that's struggling. When you struggle, when you can't pay your players and staff on time because of whatever reason, that's a club that's struggling. The captain called the owner out in the interview afterwards, Farad Rawson. And you know what? Fair play to him. Well done. Well done. And more staff will call it out, 100 million percent. Fans have called it out. And then we had the story yesterday. The manager, Jed Brannan, leaving to go and join John Doolan as his number two at Accrington Stanley. You know what? Well done, Accrington. You got yourself a good number two there with plenty of experience. He's been at the club before. Makes a lot of sense. But for Morecambe, this is an absolute mess. And I'm sorry, Morecambe fans, but I do generally believe that you're going to be in a relegation battle next season. Whether we're in the league or not, I do believe you're going to be in a relegation battle. Part of me hopes we stay in League 2 so I can go to Morecambe and cover them and cover their story and get it known on a worldwide scale and get people interested. But you know what? I may end up doing that anyway. If we go up to League 1, I may end up just going to Morecambe anyway at some point during the season, next season, just to cover them, just to give them the slightest bit more coverage than any media outlet could do. Media outlets will cover them, but only at the thick of it. Only when it's too late. Some will cover it, you know, during the period. And fair play to them. <clears throat> I think that Talk TV will probably do something with them. You know, they covered running during the, their protest against Port Vale in the game uh, against their owner, Dai Young. Um, we know Talk TV will do something. GB News might cover it. There might be some stuff on local stuff. Well, we know there was some stuff on local stuff. Um, Sky Sports will do something on it at some point. 
talk sport will talk about it at some point. Be just to see Simon Jordan's thoughts on that. But it's it's a mess of a situation. It really is a mess. My message to Jason Whittingham as someone who doesn't support Morecambe, someone who's on the outside of the situation, looking in, says this, not personal, purely business, sell the club. Sell the club. Get the right buyer on the table. Get people interested. Put the club up for sale if you haven't already and sell the club. Because clearly you're doing a lot of damage. You might not be aware of it, but you are doing a lot of damage. Trust me, as someone who's seen clubs go out of business under owners like Steve Dale, clubs struggling under certain ownership and really struggling, plummeting down the leagues, financially suffering, people like the Oystons at Blackpool, people like the Andersons at Bolton, Bichetti at Leighton Orient, uh, Agbomba, I think his name was, at Hereford United. By the way, they're now called Hereford FC, Jason Whittingham, because they had to uh, basically go away and restart again as a Phoenix club because of what their owner did. Do you want to become that? Do you want to become the man who's responsible for them going away and starting again as AFC Morecambe? Or starting again as Morecambe Athletic or Morecambe Town or Morecambe AFC? Do you want to be responsible for that, Jason Whittingham? Because I'm pretty sure in your heart of heart you don't want to be. And if you're if you're in your heart of heart you don't want to be, sell the club. Just sell it. Sell it to the right person. Make sure the right person is on the table with the funds to back it up and put that name on the dotted line. Put that group on the dotted line. We all know what owners can do. We all know what owners can do for the good of clubs. Carlisle's owners, I've got full faith in them. Gillingham's owner, Brad Gallinson, yes, they made a couple of managerial mistakes, but I've got faith in them. It's, please, Jason Whittingham, please understand the damage you are doing to supporters, to the staff, to the players that are still that, that will stay there next season because there's not going to be a lot of players staying there next season. You know, I, I think I've said down in a previous video about Doncaster Rovers, I would look at Jacob Badal as a centre-back option. But in the circumstances, it would be a bittersweet signing. Yes, it would be a fantastic signing for us. He'd be a fantastic signing for any club in League One or Two. But it'd be it'd, any signing from a club under financial scrutiny will always be bittersweet to me. Because, you know, it, it's the club at the other end that's going to suffer. And yes, it's a competitive sport, but we don't want competitiveness on this scale. We don't want competitiveness at the sake of clubs existing. We want us to be competitive. We want to sign other people's players, but we still want them to be in a strong position financially. We still want clubs to be alive. We don't want to sign someone at the expense of a club going out of business. No, that's not what, that's not what we're in the sport to do. We're never in the sport to do that. Comment down below your thoughts, guys. I, I'm uh, lost for words what's happening at Morecambe. And anyone abroad, anyone who supports Premier League clubs, please, please share this story. Share this out. I'm not a Morecambe fan and I'm telling their story. Other fans are telling their story. Staff members will tell their story soon enough. Players will tell their story. Farad Rawson's already called him out. There is one common enemy within that football club and it's Jason Whittingham. And whether he wants to be or not, that is the common enemy. Thank you very much, everyone. I am the C-H-A-L-L. Ta-ra for now. That's full time. Whittingham out. Save Morecambe Football Club.